Good morning, folks. We'll start with something pleasant today, a beautiful plankton bloom shared by NASA's Earth Observatory. Folks, this is very cool. 100,000 amps is the new world record for electric current. They're using yttrium inside a superconductor and have set a new high mark by a good margin. They're trying to create the fusion reactor magnet. Top quake of the day was a 5.9 in southern Alaska, with aftershocks and a good deal of activity near Japan as well. Calvert Cliffs nuclear plant is in partial shutdown after a leak in the cooling system to the pressurized water reactor. That's literally not cool, man. Here is the current drought look, updated as of July 22nd, bit of a comeback from a month ago. Quick ice update, the Arctic ice continues to be below average but still higher than a few years ago, while the Antarctic is setting even more daily records. It has never been this high on this date in all of human observations. And for those who missed it a few days ago, the man claiming these are errors is Ian Eisenman, a top AGW propagandist and has now been shot down by about a dozen experts, including those at NASA who helped provide this data. Sorry, Ian. Tropics Watch begins in a minor way off the coast of Africa. It'll need days to form if it does. Meanwhile, the watch is a warning and borderline alert in the East Pacific where we have three systems, Genevieve included, all heading west towards Hawaii, although the first should weaken and miss south. They found some energy and some unusual space weather we'll see in a bit, just churning away out there, sucking up all the precipitable water nearby. Australia says goodbye to that eastern low on its way to New Zealand while they glance west at the cresting convergence line there. In Europe, there is a significant heat wave hitting the northeastern areas, the muggy moments of an extreme climate shift right there. Meanwhile, the storms continue to pound the southern regions and a convergence crest the northwest. Heat and moisture shooting up to meet the low in the Midwest of the United States. Going to be a rough one in this area tonight, folks. I your local forecasts after the noon hour. Well, here's the latest 48 hours of our star. Very calm. Please note this is four straight days of helio viewer being down, so we'll make do with our other resources. First, incoming sunspots are not really getting their act together. The north has medium intensity to them, but both the north and south appear magnetically separated. We'll take a look at the incoming spots to the south. Return of the MAC, looking quite different on the second pass around the Earth-facing side. I'm also eyeing a baby group born just above this weak southern grouping. No surprises here. The solar flaring is quite low. Let's go to that space weather we mentioned earlier as density spikes continue to be present in the solar wind, some very high, with speed rising now as well. And despite the lack of geomagnetic storms, the sensitive flux are taking good shots here. And we also saw a low energy proton spike that actually kept going right up, up and off the charts. Clearly, the southern coronal hole is exiting. The blue coronal field should be the mitigator for a day or so as we wait for the Earth to leave the negative influence and head back into positive. Also remember folks, it's the website birthday week. So the 70 to 80 hours of content for last year and 70 to 80 hours more coming this year is discounted from the normal rate if you go for the full year. You also help the mobile observatory project. It's $3 a month or $15 for the year if you get in or renew this week. Much appreciated, folks. Current conditions and a very calm star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.